Okay, we are recording. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. I have a few slides just to give a bit introduction so that for people watching the slide, watch the video knows the context. Okay, good evening. And depends on where you are, maybe good afternoon and good morning. So today is the webinar for the winners to share their solutions. I will give a brief introduction about the competition and then I'll give that to Joe and Kristen from Meta to give us the introduction about PyTorch and then we'll listen to the winners. So this is the PyTorch track for 2021 I2E low power computer vision challenge. So what is the problem? The problem is track multiple objects in video. Uh, as you can see, there are several people. These are Purdue students. They throw balls and catch balls. And the problem is we need to know who holds the ball. That's the problem. Um, as you can see, some of them were wearing masks. So it was captured during the COVID time and they get good outdoor exercise. The answer format will be something like the following. Uh, we will consider the free numbers. So if the balls, one, any of the ball change hands, then we want to know who holds the ball. So the ball may have different colors. Not all balls will show up in a particular video. Some balls have more, some videos have more balls, some videos have fewer balls. And some videos have more people, some have videos have fewer people. But it will be something like the following. The solutions need to detect when a ball changes hand and then record who holds the ball right now. We also have uh, some flexibility. We actually allow the, the friend number to be plus or minus 10. So if you are uh, one or two friends before our simple solution, then that's fine. Uh, this is uh, the top of the leaderboard. We can see many teams were busy submitting up until the last day. The competition was held from August 1st to the end of August, but we because of time zone, so we actually allow the last submission up to September 1st. And we can see the scores uh, from different teams. Uh, we realized that the scores were pretty close. So we actually had uh, another set of data that are not public. And we carefully check whether the ranking has changed. So it's interesting that the ranking did not change, but the score have the, the gap between the scores have been uh, much bigger. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we took us uh, some time to decide the winners. Fortunately, uh, there's no surprise. The, the ranking is the same, uh, but the score with the additional data actually shows the bigger gap. The first award goes to the Vita team and they will present their solution. The second award goes to the base slim team. Uh, the third award the team decided to withdraw and we also have an honorable mention the sprint team. Um, I want to thank some of the key organizers for from Purdue University, including Justin, Aiden, and Zitian. Thank you for your great work. We also so they were really three different sub teams working on data collection, simple solution, and the referee system. Now I'm going to hand this to the Meta team to talk about PyTorch. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Drew, if that's all right, I'll yeah, go for it. Good for me. Yeah, sure. So, um, so yes, now in Meta uh, and on PyTorch in particular, I think uh, I want to reinstate like our um, our excitement to look at the solutions that have been developed uh, here and with these teams. Uh, overall, I think uh, PyTorch, you know, is known for the uh, research uh, platform and framework that, that it is. And um, one thing that, that I want to reinstate also here is the importance that we see in on-device. Uh, you know, there are trends happening out there with, for example, you know, Facebook switching to Meta and how important it's going to make this field moving forward. But also we've seen uh, with our community, uh, the more... Uh, research that has gone through uh, on device because of a range of reasons from, um, you know, latency needs for the models or use cases happening, uh, connectivity 
uh, or lack thereof and the need for a lot of AI to move on device for these reasons, uh, privacy also needs. And so um, uh, what we're hoping to achieve with this competition and our engagement here is to keep learning more and more uh, from the community and from these teams uh, on what works for on device and how we can help support this uh, better uh, moving forward. So thank you everyone for your engagement. Uh, and we're really excited to dig into uh, these today. I'll let you take it back, Professor. Okay, thank you. So how about we go from the, uh, so I, I think we have a two teams here presenting. How about we go from the, the second team, the base slain team from Matron. Um, you can present your solution. And then after your presentation, people can ask questions, including the, 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 the first team. Uh, you are welcome to ask questions as well. And then we'll give to go to the first team and you can present your solution. So the base slain team is all yours. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Mm, my name is Yang Yong, and, and our team is from Meituan. Uh, and I will give a presentation of 2021 Low Power Computation Version Challenge. And this title is Be Slim Towards Extremely Low Power Multi Object Tracking with General Compression Toy Kits. Um, this is this is our this is our content, and uh, there are three parts: uh, introduction of our solution, um, functions in Bislim toy kits, and extremely low power pipeline with Bislim. Um, first of all, I will give a brief introduction of this challenge. Uh, Facebook is sponsor, and thank thank you very much. Uh, and how is uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. The software is PyTorch. Um, we need to track multiple moving objects in video captured by an uh, UAV. And uh, the score is correctness divided um, by energy. Uh, the energy is measured by a power meter. Energy, energy is the cumulative power of time. So, uh, and so our solution is the multiple object tracking with general compressed toy kits. And this is the flow chart of our solution. And the input data of video will be extract will be extracted one frame every 10 frames and then will be the dynamic crop data. And after that, it will go through a detection system. Uh, the output of the per person detection will be re-identified while the output of the board, board detection will be color recognized. And the collision recognition will be executed at last. And so we used a deep source like pipeline. Uh, it uh, was mentioning that we didn't use fair mode because it is more suitable for uh, one class detection and the ID. So the deep sort is more flexible for this challenge. Um, this is our detection part. Um, we use the ULO X as our pipeline. And the training data set is composed of Panda and uh, sample data. Uh, there is no ball in the Panda data set. So um, mosaic augmentation is good for the fusion of the data sets. And the input shape is um, 416. Mm. Because there um, because there is too 
there is too much redundant in information in the frame of the video. We use the dynamic crop with the detection boxes uh, from the last frame. We uh, extract the main part of the picture so that we can get a larger objects, which is good for the detection system. And this is our ready part. The, out, the output of per person detection will be into will, will be in, input into our ready model. Um, poison and the feature from the ready model will be considered in our match system. And the results of match system needed to be corrected. So we add an ID recall model to recall the right ID from the ID core. Uh, and this is our ID recall model because the pore of the ID is enclosed the same in our video, in one video. Uh, so in other words, we can get the total number of the people in the input video through the ground truth at the beginning. Uh, so in this way, if ID number is more than the ground truth number, we can recall the true ID from the from the ID pool, and uh, we update the ID pool after the matching system every frame. Now we introduce the part of oh, now we introduce the uh, functions in this name toy case. Mm, there are four parts in our business name toy case. Uh, there are tensor quantization, filter pruning, knowledge distillation, and uh, lightweight architecture. Uh, firstly, we use the quantization with self distillation. And the teacher model is uh, the original network, and the student model is the fake quantity is the network. Uh, it is more robust to the long tail dis distribution of teachers and uh, is much faster to convergence even with biased samples. Uh, then we use the hardware pruning and we use the structure pruning uh, for our challenge, uh, for our solution. Uh, it is a more suitable method for a specific device. Um, and besides, uh, we use the we use the serial and the parallel group convolution <laughs> convolution uh, in our backbone, which is proposed uh, in STGNet. It is an extremely lightweight structure for Raspberry Pi and is faster and better than FBNet with the same flops in detection and ready task. Uh, and uh, these are our submissions. The top of the top of it is Euro X uh, with baseline correlation, baseline pruning. And the reality with baseline polarization and the pruning and the light, lightweight structure. Uh, and all submitted solutions are optimized with QNPAC. Uh, finally, we got the 8.556 uh, score, which is the second place in this challenge. Thanks. That's all. Thank you. Is there any questions from anyone? Uh, uh, hi, uh, Yong Yang. Uh, thank you for your great talk. It's, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, I wonder, have you open source your base limb toolkit? Uh, no, and um, that no, we not 
we, we don't we, we, we haven't open source our toy kids but we will open source our uh, solutions oh, uh, an another question is about the panda data set um yeah so uh, okay is it uh, is a panda data set uh is is in the in the tracking literature uh the panda data. Is, uh, it should be the slide number four i guess number four oh, number four yeah okay okay yes this one panda mm -hmm. is it from the tracking literature uh tracking the teacher what oh. Okay, I see it's from the human centric video data set. But how, how do you deal with uh, the balls? Uh, I mean, if you use this uh, panda data set, it'd be, I mean, the whole data set will be dominated by persons, and there'll be a severe problem of uh, human uh, uh, label imbalance, right? So, how you yeah. uh, solve this problem in the training? Uh, okay. And, and the ball is not in the panda data set. Uh, but uh, we um, we have five 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 videos uh, from the sample data. Uh, there are many more in the in them. So we uh, mixed the mixed the, the two data sets and uh, we use the mosaic augmentation to fill fuse the data set. That's our solution. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, it's it's really smart of you to do that. Yeah, I didn't even, I don't even think of that. That's that's a really good idea. Very smart. Thank you. Thank you. Panda data set is is from Tsinghua University, and it it is a very large data set, uh, and uh, uh, and and it is, um, it is, uh, uh, videos by the, um. By the camera, like the UAV, like the UAV. Okay. Is it a wide angle camera that is fixed, on um, maybe on some buildings for yes, surveillance? Yes. Oh, okay, surveillance camera. Yes. I see. I see. I see. That makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions? Any question from? I had a uh, question. High torch expert from. May I have a question. Facebook? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, um, so on one of the slides, I can't merge one, you mentioned, uh, I think it was the one before this, you said it was very good on specific hardware. Does that mean that the pruning um, gets feedback from the performance on the hardware to, uh, to optimize the layers based on the performance on that specific hardware? Uh, uh, uh. My English is okay. Poor. I'm sorry. Um, the I think it was here down down one slide. Um, yeah, you said it is a more suitable method for a specific device. So yes. does that mean you use like information about the device to do the pruning? Yes, yes, yes. What information do you use about the device? Um, um so we have a raspberry pi yeah. and and uh, we 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 mm, mm, we 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 need the we need got the information of the uh, speed of uh, like uh, uh, convolution layer uh, max corner layer on the mm, on the specific device on the Raspberry Pi, so we can pruning. Uh, so the the critical of the pruning is based on the speed on the Raspberry Pi. I see. And uh, on one of the other slides, you showed uh, pruning synapses and pruning uh, neurons, I think. Did you use both of those techniques, or, or what did the prune network look like? Uh, what? Did on if you go two slides back? Two slides. Yeah, to slide eight. Uh. Huh? Can you go one more up? 
to slide number eight, where it says functions in base limb toolkits. Can you open that slide? Yeah, there. Uh, oh. In the pruning section, you show it shows uh, pruning synapses and pruning neurons. Did you do both of those? No, 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 no. We, we, we used the. Uh, we use the pony neurons just um okay yes so the final model was still using like dense convolutions you didn't have sparse, sparse yes ways. yes okay we we use the structure pony okay yes cool all right those are my questions thank you hi i have a question so I was a student leader of the long video team and I helped the development of the sample solution. And I wonder how did our sample solution helped you to like develop or improve your solution? Uh, uh, okay. Uh, mm. do, you, do you consider the sample solution at all? Do you look at the sample solution? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, the simple solution, um, we change it, or we, we only change the detection model and the ready model. So the detection model is, uh, or the, is Yulu X, and the ready model is uh, use our own backbone. And the, and the coalition, uh, and the coalition recognition, uh, we change it a little, a little. Coalition recognition, and you, uh, it means which which person hold the hold which ball. Um, uh, for example, um, one person, one person cannot hold the two balls, uh, at the same time. Uh, uh, mm, this point can uh, this change this change can um, lead the uh, um, five points five points uh, at the last. Mm. Okay, that's all. I I have one other question. Did you? measure power consumption and optimize power consumption? Or did you try to just try to go fast and you thought faster would mean less energy? Uh, fast, uh, what? Did you measure power consumption of your model? Or uh, did no, you only no. try to make it fast? Fast, fast. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, there is a very interesting things which meet, make our very make we very fused make us very fused and the pet touch the pet touch uh, import import touch uh, this line import touch this line uh, can 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 use the very long time very very long time I I don't know why. I don't know why. Import touch this line. Okay, that's good feedback for us. Thank you. Yes, and, and the, this line on the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry uh, Pi, used a, a long, a longer time than our MacBook MacBook Pro. Yeah. Yes. Yes. MacBook Pro is very powerful, <laughs> very fast. Um, yes. Any other questions? Joe, do you have anything? Or Christian, do you have anything to share? Uh, not for me, no. Thank you. Chakri, do you have anything you want to discuss? I don't have any questions. Thank you for the great presentation. Okay. All right, so then that's give to you. Thank you very much. Congratulations again for winning the second prize. Uh, so let's give the floor to the team that wins the first prize. Jenny, are you the speaker?
All right. Start when you are ready. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Purdue, for your hosting and uh, Facebook for your sponsorship. Uh, also, Meituan and the other teams for your uh, for your competing solutions and those your solutions as uh, you know pushing us to us to the better ones, especially the last ten days. Um, so, following the previous uh, uh, Facebook's uh, members' question, we use uh, we actually use a USB power meter. Sorry to, to interrupt. Uh, I think you are sharing a wrong screen. Oh, my bad, my bad. Sorry, did I show? So silly. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> so silly. Okay, are you able to see the screen? Uh, this one. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, following the previous Facebook uh, guys' question, so we built a USB power meter to measure the energy, and we found that the energy cost is uh, linearly correlated with the latency. So basically, on I would say on Raspberry Pi to make the solution running faster, uh, is almost guaranteed to save the energy more. Yeah, okay, so that's start my uh, presentation today. So we have members from UT Austin, Texas A&M and uh, OnePax AI Research. So this outline, we first introduced the two basic tasks in the solution, they are detection and reunification. And then we introduce pruning and quantization for model compression. And uh, uh, more uh, later on, we'll introduce our solution for video action detection. And lastly, we will introduce our proposed two, uh, two, two modules to further save the energy. They are optimal pipelining and a dynamic inference. Um, this is a uh, two basic vision tasks used in this uh, in our submission. So, given the input, the first uh, firstly we use the yellow model to do the detection. It is able to give us a ball person detection bounding boxes. And then we would use uh, ResNet uh, 18 as a reunification models to obtain uh, the identity labels for the persons and balls. And these two, uh, these two are the basic tasks. And we are use and these are all the only two learning modules in our solution. And we all, you know, all implement using deep neural networks. So this summarizes the pipeline of deep association. So basically, given the input of detected bounding boxes of persons and balls. And we use this as a query. So we can see how yeah, we have person queries and ball queries. And we use a ResNet 18 as an identity aware feature extractor to extract uh, the feature embeddings for the person's balls. And we feed them into a gallery. So this gallery records the history of uh, the person's uh, previous, uh, pre previous uh, feature embeddings. And, and we use this, we, such, such a gallery stores uh, feature vectors for both persons and balls. And we apply some uh, matching strategies to make sure that the nearest, always the nearest neighbors are matched. And after the, the matching part is done, we are able to tag the identity labels for each person's involves. In the, in the model, especially for the pruning part, we, uh, we tried two different strategies. The first one is knowledge-driven and second one is data-driven. And we use knowledge-driven strategies to prune, to prune the YOLO model because the YOLO model is very complicated and uh, we already have the prior knowledge that the three branches in YOLO v5, they, they, have, they are specialized for different uh, for objects from, of different scales, for example, small, medium, and large. And we, we found that in this problem, ball persons, they, are all, they all fall in the small scale. So we only retain the small scale branch and completely discard the remaining two branches and saves us some, a lot of energy. And it also discards some ensemble blocks and they replace some uh, energy heavy modules with energy efficient modules. So this is called, we call them knowledge driven uh, model pruning. And the second one is we use some data driven pruning to prune the ResNet 18 for person reunification feature extraction. And we further apply correlation aware training to obtain uh, a more efficient model. Uh, we know that uh, neural network models, they, they are stored with float 32 or even first float uh, 64 uh, band, uh, uh, bit widths. So we reduce it to only eight, eight bit widths. They are unsigned integers. And this could save us a lot of, uh, you know, both storage cost and the computation cost. The left one shows such a discretization. And you know, in, in signal processing, it's called, uh, you know, uh, analog to digital, uh, A2, uh, A2D. And the right one, it shows that how we 
simulate such a quantization behavior in the training because directly doing uh, the quantization of the training would uh, would harm a lot of prop, uh, performance of the model. So we insert these kind of fake quantizations and fake uh, uh, you know fake quantization on the weight and on activation to simulate the to simulate the behavior and such a quantization aware training would would uh, bring us a uh, very minimum uh, performance loss in the, after the quantization. Um, so, uh, Xin, your turn on the detection part. Oh, thanks, Dr. Wu. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Xin Wu, and uh, this section we will introduce the detection part uh, for our model. And uh, first, I want to introduce uh, the training data set for our detection model. Uh, in this challenge, we choose a Coco data set as the training data set. And, uh, uh, you, you know, there are many images in Google data set, and uh, most of the images are not uh, suitable for this challenge. So we select some images from the Coco. Uh, the condition is uh, first, uh, uh, a person and the ball must uh, coexist in this image, and uh, no additional objects are in, uh, included in this image. Uh, Dr. Wu, could you click the screen? Okay. Okay, this is uh, the selected uh, uh, Coco samples from the uh, training data set. Uh, but uh, uh, there are several problems for the training data set, uh, for the Coco data set. The first is uh, a, ba a balanced level. Uh, the, the, the bottom figure is uh, the level distribution, level distribution for the uh, Coco data set. And the number of uh, person level is uh, 22,000, and uh, the ball is just uh, 60,000. And uh, there are also few occluded uh, samples in the code data set. And uh, the uh, domain gap of the ball detection is larger uh, in the uh, code data set. To, so uh, to solve this problem, we did some data augmentation for code data set. Here we propose three uh, code data sets sets. Uh, the left one is the detail for the uh, proposed data sets, and the right is the example images for each uh, data set. Okay, next. So with the uh, synthetic data set and the code data set, we get the final level distribution for the new data set. And uh, uh, I think from the level distribution, the ratio of a uh, person to ball is uh, two to one, and uh, there are multiple occluded occ in samples in this uh, images. And uh, the do domain gap uh, of uh, uh, the ball detection is smaller than uh, Google data set. And uh, we also did a, did a texture shift the best training for uh, our training model. Because we found that we found uh, our model uh, trained with uh, existing uh, data set uh, is uh, strongly best uh, towards to um, uh, texture. So we add uh, some random shapes uh, patched with uh, homogeneous, homogeneous texture uh, in, in these uh, training images. Uh, these, patch, these patches serve as uh, a negative uh, samples for ball detection. Uh, with this, sorry, uh, with, with this, this, this patch, our model is uh, more robust. Okay, next. Uh, here I, I want to talk about the design of uh, uh, our our model. Uh, the first uh, variant of uh, uh, proposed model is a uh, uh, variant of uh, yellow staff. Uh, we retain the small object detection layer from yellow staff, and uh, we cut off one up sample uh, block to change the uh, small object detection layer to medium. A uh, set object object detection layer, and uh, we decrease uh, all channel numbers of uh, uh, convolution layers by half uh, to reduce the flops, and uh, all input images will be reset to uh, 416 to reduce the flops. Next, we also propose a second variant of uh, uh, Yolo Mobile. It's a variant of uh, Yolo uh, Three, and also we Select the large object detection layer as the detection layer for our model. And uh, we uh, decrease the convolution thread in this down simple layers to change large object detection layer to 
medium size object object depending there. And uh, also we uh, introduce focus SPP and the CSP model uh, from uh, Euro 5 to increase the uh, accuracy for the proposed uh, model. And uh, we also change the uh, convolution layer to depth-wise convolution layer in this model to reduce the parameters and the uh, flops. Also, we uh, decrease the channel numbers of uh, uh, convolution layers uh, by half and uh, the input images are reset to uh, 416. Next. Uh, here, is, uh, here are some experiments uh, and, uh, for the deletion uh, model. Uh, so first is the false comparison. Uh, the round marks uh, are yellow file small, and uh, the cross marks are uh, proposed uh, yellow mobile v1, and uh, the square is uh, yellow mobile v2. Uh, from the figure, from the figure, the uh, yellow mobile v1 uh, with uh, input size is uh, 416, it reduced uh, 16 times flops with just 24% uh, loss on MABC compared to yellow file small. And uh, here is the uh, energy comparison of uh, different models. And uh, all e energy measurements are conducted uh, on 60 samples by same recipe very high and the uh, same parameter in one hour. And uh, uh, Yolo Mobile V1 uh, reduced uh, 10 times the energy uh, compared to Yolo Mobile Small. And uh, another interesting point is uh, we found that we found that depth-wise the convolution is not efficient in energy reduction for this situation here because, uh, uh, sorry, back, back. the square is the uh, Euler model V2. Uh, it uses the uh, depth of wide convolution, but uh, the cross mark is the uh, Euler model V1. It uh, didn't use uh, the depth of wide, but uh, their energy is uh, the same. So uh, the depth of wide convolution is not uh, efficient. Next. Uh, here is the parameters the comparison. Uh, uh, here I use three uh, models to compare their parameters. And uh, Euro Mobile V2 reduced uh, uh, 29 times the parameters compared to Euro 5 uh, small. Uh, this means depth-wise could reduce the parameters, but uh, uh, is not efficient in, uh, energy, uh, in energy reduction. That's the definition part. How you now, your turn. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Hao Miao. I will be presenting the re-identification part of this talk. Following up the detection model, we, we need a way to identify each person detected by the detection model. And this is where we use re-identification. The goal is that given an input image, we want to be able to associate images of the same person taken from different part of the video. So this slide describes the pipeline of re-ID structure. The first stage is sampling. In this stage, we, we will have two sets of image. The first set is the query set, which is the person image that we would like to identify. And the second set is the gallery set. This set contains images of every type of person. After the sample stage, the second stage is, a feature extract, is the feature extraction stage. In this stage, we have a pre-trained ResNet-18 model that we trained for identifying person. This ResNet-18 is like a feature extractor in which we input the image of a person and the model will output the feature of the query image and the gallery image. So here, as you can see, we will have one feature vector for the query image and other four feature vectors for the gallery images. Once we have the features for each image, we then enter the last stage, which is the nearest neighbor matching stage. In this stage, we compute the distance between our query image and gallery images using cosine distance. This distance represents the similarity between different images. And so the image that has the smallest distance will have the same ID with our query image. And this is basically how we identify our query image. <coughs> so this is the whole structure for the ResNet-18 model we used for the competition. We used the exact implementation from PyTorch. Basically, this model starts with a convolution layer with a kernel size of seven. And then 
followed by four basic blocks and then an average pooling layer as well as a fully connected layer at the end. Next. And for the challenges we met for re-identification, in this contest, there are mainly two categories of challenges that lead to incorrect identification results. The first category is different camera view angles. And the second category is occlusion. Both of these factors can potentially make people change hugely on different frames, which makes the whole task more difficult. Here, I would like to specifically talk about occlusion. So under the occlusion category, there are roughly two factors. The first factor is ball person occlusion. And the second factor is occlusion between person and person. And uh, not this slide, previous one, please. Uh, previous one, sorry. Yes, as you can see in the picture, when a person is holding a ball, this causes occlusion that a ball may occlude any part of a person's body, which may potentially disturb how the model associates person. And the second factor is occlusion between person and person. This is very similar to ball occlusion, but instead it usually results in more occlusion compared to ball. And as a result, lower the accuracy of our model. Uh, next. To solve this problem, our solution is occlusion-aware data augmentation. This is a simple data augmentation method where we try to add ball images and person images for occlusion uh, in the training data during the training process. We add these balls and person images to make the model more robust to these occlusion factors. And we also expect the model to actually learn to ignore the occluded part and instead use the unoccluded part of the image when associating person. We have also tried other solutions such as random erasing data augmentation, and we found out that this method got more improvement for our scenario. Next. Uh, Leo, I take it over to the end to make sure we can finish them in time. Yeah, thank okay. you. Sure. Um, so we tackle the second challenge, uh, which is various camera view using a, a domain environment feature learning. It can be treated as a minimax game. So here, uh, FE, we given given the input uh, reality images and uh, we feed it to a feature extractor, and it is followed by two ad classifier. The first is identity classifier. This is a normal reality pipeline, and the right one will be the view cl classifier. It will classify uh, what a camera view is a reality image is a, is the input reality images. So, so we, we are able to get a two loss and these, these two losses plays in, plays in a minimax game. Basically, we, we would like to minimize the reidentification loss and such a minimize, let, let's look at uh, this, uh, uh, look at this equation. So the mean is, uh, is applied on FE and FI, which is the feature extractor and the identity classifier. So it, it would like the identity loss to be small and uh, the view loss to be large, so it is it, it will it will like uh, it would like to confuse the view classifier, and uh, the max it plays on view, so it, it would like to minimize the view loss. So here uh, we are we make them into a minimax game so that uh, the learn the features will be robust to different uh, camera views, but it remains uh, uh, discriminative to the person reidentification. So this is our final result for model compression. So given the input of ResNet 18, we first apply structure pruning on channels. It is able to give us a 42 times flops reduction with only 21% MAP loss. And we fine tune the, uh, we fi further fine tune on the lower resolution images because lower, res lower input or less pixels is guaranteed to give us less flops and the less flops is guaranteed to give us less energy consumption. So such a way directly gave us four times flops reduction with only 8% MAP loss. And we further apply a quantization of our training uh, and it is described in the below graph and it gave us a three times inference speed up with, uh, with uh, 3.7 times model size reduction and only 1% MAP loss. Such it is almost ignorable. And finally, it gave us a lightweight rather than 18. Uh, I talked about the, the action detection module. So these are the three challenges in the action detection. The first would be the uh, detection errors. 
it, it can be it can be categorized into two two part. The first is missed detection. Uh, it can uh, such a missing detection would be resulted from the, the occlusions, and second would be false detections, uh, or you can treat as false positive. So our learned model is still confused with those patches with homogeneous colors, and it, it confuses it, mistake it for balls. Uh, although we have already tried to devise a train, but such a such a problem still exists. And the second the major challenge would be wrong association. It is called, it is resulted from the re-ID. For example, given a given an image that person is occluded with another person, so our association would make mistakes. The third part would be uh, because here we want energy energy minimum energy cost, so it's very hard to do the three uh, geometry uh, to do the you know, 3D scene reconstruction. It's very expensive. And because we cannot do 3D scene reconstru reconstruction, so reasoning the relations between persons and balls is very hard. Uh, so we propose a heuristic approach. Um, so let's, let, let's look at uh, uh, these symbols. The first, uh, it, it means erosion or dilation. And the, the blue one would means wrong association. The red one means this uh, missed detection. And those, uh, uh, rectangles, they are, it means collisions with different persons in different colors. We use different colors to represent the collision with different persons. So the first, uh, uh, the first part, uh, the first figure, the first sub figure, it's a, it's a ball person collision history. And the arrow is the time span. So we can see it, uh, the ball uh, here, it's, it only focuses on one ball because uh, the moving trajectory for, for different balls, they are completely independent. So we focus only one ball, and uh, uh, such assumption is hold uh, uh, in in the challenge. And this we can see that it has been collided with different persons, and this is a misdetection part, and this is wrong association part. We use uh, red color to uh, to to signify it, and this against uh, uh, wrong association. This is again the misdetection, and. We first uh, dilate it by set up loss, and this seta is a prior knowledge. Um, so we use uh, the half of the seta is the minimum flying time of the balls, and we we uh, we carefully observe the sample videos, and we derive this from the sample videos. So we 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 dilate it by uh, set up loss, uh, and uh, oh my bad, should it be uh, seta over. Uh, sorry, a uh, set up by divided by two. Uh, but anyway, we use a, such a dilation to connect these uh, disconnected components. So after such a dilation, those are uh, those unconnected components become connected, and we later on apply majority voting. Such a majority voting is able to overcome the association error and the misdetections errors. And later on, we erode it back. Erode it back because we want accurate uh, time to describe the catch time and the throw time. So such a uh, uh, action detection by erosion and uh, uh, dilation is uh, able to give us a huge performance boost in, in, the, in the final score. And besides uh, these modules, I mean, all the, all the modules I described, they, they, are, they, they are proposed for better accuracy. So we, we propose other strategies to to pursue lower energy cost. So we, this is the strategy we propose. It's called optimal pipelining. Here we trade the memory uh, for less data movement. Uh, so let, let's make it clear. So here we have 2D models. They, are all, they all have a lot of parameters, although we have reduced it to our best, but still a lot. And the building the computation graph is even more uh, you know, memory costive and energy costive. And here, um, so we use some cache strategy to store the, the intermediate results so that each model will be loaded only one time. And such a, such a strategy is actually treating the memory because we, we, we store all these images or crops, uh, boxes, bounding boxes in the memory. Definitely it would uh, cost more memory, but uh, it, it gives us less data movement and it means our, for the CPU, the cache hit rate, the real cache, I'm not talking about such as, uh, not this different from this cache. I mean, the real cache in the CPU, L1, L2, L3, those three levels of cache, the cache hit rate will be improved great. And uh, such a trading strategy give us uh, a, a lot of uh, energy saving. Um, so this is the overview. So um, 
to give an input video, we, we, we store the image into the image queue uh, at once. And uh, we go, go to the ball person detection part. It gives us uh, those detected crops, person ball, person, person ball crops together with the bounding boxes, store them into the crop cache. And we apply the, we fed it to, we fed them into the deep association part. It is able to tag the identity labels for the persons and balls. Um, and we store them into a box cache. The bo box had only it only stores the bounding boxes and their identity labels. And we further fed it to the action detection. So it's just a plug -in and play. We need to use some uh, cache strategies to improve the real CPU cache hit rate at the cost of more energy, uh, more memory, not energy. It brings us uh, uh, energy saving. Uh, we further tried two, uh, two different dynamic inference strategy. The first one is activity region selection. That's given the, for example, the input uh, video frame at time t, and we already have this detection results at t minus one, which is, a, which is just a previous frame. And we have this detection results. So we are able to get its, uh, get its uh, detection region initial guess. Uh, but we know that all person ball they are moving, but because of the temporal coherence of the video, we know it won't move very huge, uh, very uh, abruptly, abrupt, abruptly. So we just apply, uh, we just add some residual region as delta X and delta Y. So, and it, it will then crop the image out and uh, feed it to the ball person detection. Such a dynamic inference by activity region selection give us, uh, again, a lot of energy saving. And the last uh, strategy we use is a collision inspection. Um, imagine we have a switch between the deep association and uh, the detected uh, uh, bounding boxes and detected bounding, uh, and the detected persons above. So we just inspect whether there's any collision happens. Here we, we define collision as uh, the center, the center of the ball falls into the uh, bounding box of the person. So if it falls into, then we we say it's a collision. So we just inspect if there's if there's no such collision for any of the ball person pairs, we would say there's no, uh, we don't need to run the, uh, the deep association. It's just a, just energy waste. So we just uh, lift up the switch. And, but if there is collision, we would uh, turn the switch on. Uh, we have open sourced our code at uh, our Vita group. And uh, if you're interested, you can visit them. And uh, if you have any question, just feel free to contact us. Yeah, that's all. So any question? I had one quick question. Um, I mean, first off, thank you for such a comprehensive presentation. This is this is incredible. Um, thank you. Appreciate on, on, on the quantization, um, it's really cool that you guys use QAT. Uh, oh, sorry, David, I jumped the line. Um, uh, really, really quick. I guess I'm I'm curious about your experience on, on QAT. It sounds like you got three point seven x speed up, and you reduced the model quite quite a bit. Did you jump right to QAT? Did you try static first? Like what like what was the process that you guys? Uh, thought through and used to, to apply quantization? Oh yeah, really good question. Um, we tried, we start with static or uh -huh. uh, post-training quantization, static way. Yep. Um, yep. But it does not, it, and the, the, speed, the speed up is the same as QAT, but oh. the, the accuracy loss is, uh, is large. Got it. Yeah. So later okay. on, we come to QAT because QAT has you know such a quantization simulation and training, so the okay. the parameters is adaptive to the quantization, and it gives us minimum accuracy loss. Got it. Okay, that's really good feedback. Thank you. Cool. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Sorry, David. Go for it. I had a number of questions. No worries. I put my hand up <laughs> after you started talking. Um, okay. Did you use the normal QAT and PyTorch, or did you have some other mechanism for quantizing? Oh, we we use uh we use some third party toolkit like uh it's called the neural network intelligence. So but but they are calling your API, but they do a you know more user for friendly wrapping on your uh, APIs. Similar to probably what Lightning does, I think. Yeah, like like that. They they just yep. do, do a better wrapper on your APIs, but the, cool. the technology comes from you. Got it. Um, okay. My next question was, I saw you use on at least one of the two models, uh, a ResNet 18 backbone and then did pruning on it. Uh, I'm curious if you considered, or if you tried other, uh, more recent architectures that are designed for mobile, like uh, mobile net, FB net, efficient net, something like that. Squeeze um, that. That's a really good suggestion. We, we plan to try it. You know, we are actually writing a tech report to summarize our solution for the challenge. 
So in the tech report, we will do a more comprehensive survey on different backbones. Definitely we will try mobile net and efficient net. They are definitely worth trying. But because of limited time, you know, we only try ResNet. Very cool. Well, it's awesome that you're able to get such great results, uh, even with, uh, you know, starting from a very old model. I guess the, the pruning was very effective. Yeah. Thank, thank you for making the toolkit. Thank you for making the toolkit. It's really yeah, Absolutely. Um, okay. I had a question about the re-ID model that you said was pre-trained. Um, was that pre-trained on, um, like, ImageNet or something else? A uh, ResNet? Uh, uh, I don't think we have do any pre-training because... The image net has a really large domain gap. Uh, yeah. The uh, reID reID data set. You can see the reID data set. They are just uh, you know person centric. Uh, but image net has a hundred classes. Uh, sorry, a thousand classes with all natural objects. It has a, right. a hierarchy tree ontology on it. So right. I thought there was a slide that said that you used uh, at least you started from a, a pre-trained model, and I was, I was curious about about that. Mm, yeah, we, we, we may try, yeah, but uh, but we, we, we didn't uh, use it. But I think you 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 should be right. Maybe an image app pre-training gives a better initialization. We, we know we all know that the optimization for the model is very hard because only they only use one uh, first order optimization by SGD. Uh, but image app pre-training would give, definitely give a good initialization point for on on the landscape on the optimization landscape. Yeah, so I, I believe you, you may be right. We'll try in our tech report to see if uh, image app training would uh, lead to a better performance for the reality model. Okay, uh, my third question is actually about the slide that you have up right now with the the person, the the B there, the the data where augmentation with a person, including another person. Um, when you, I guess like when you identify something like that, where you basically have a bounding box and there's two people in it, how does the reID model handle that? Oh. That's a small question. I didn't mention it in the. Uh, so we have two sources of uh, the persons to be pasted. One is directly from the reID data set. Uh, we have some uh, pre-trained uh, person segmentation model, but it, it is noisy. Some cases would it would paste. It cannot uh, segment the person perfectly. It have some noisy background, uh, but still it works. This is one source of the pasted persons. The, the other source of pasted persons from Coco because Coco. Yeah, my, my question though is like, how does the reID model like respond when it, it sees a bounding box with two people in it? Like, how do you identify that person yeah, when there's it, really it, two it people? Made, it makes mistakes a lot. Okay. Especially when two persons are included very close and made mistakes. That, that is actually the second sources, the second major sources or sources of our uh, action detection part. And the, such a reID error will give the wrong association. Got it. Yeah. And then my last question was, how did you? What loss did you use for training the reID model? Was it like a? Yeah. Oh, so how did you train it? Triplet loss. We use triplet loss. We know. Okay. There are, yeah, there are uh, you know cross entropy loss, uh, triplet loss, circular loss, circular circular loss. We we found that triplet loss is the best one. And how did you get the the labels for finding you know two pictures of the same person? Was it just labels from the training data, or did you also have something from Coco where you had uh, identities? Oh, those. Uh, wait, oh, I, I got a question. We didn't. We the sample video. We, we it's not involving training. It's fully for evaluation. We okay. already have uh, three reID benchmark. They are Duke, uh, MK, MK, and the CUHK. I see. So you had an external data set that let you yeah, train use triple uh, loss for like embeddings of the person images? Exactly. We use three okay. existing reID benchmarks and we merge them together so that we get a large enough reID data set to train the reID model. Cool. Well, this is very impressive work and I really appreciate the very detailed presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for your sponsorship. Absolutely. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Yeah. Hi, hi Jamie. This is Shao. Uh, I think, oh, yeah. presentation uh, I found it very interesting and I just have a, I have a few questions so if I understand it correctly you actually have to go through the entire testing video first and then so so on the gap things that you mentioned later in the slides would work right yes yes so in other words this is actually a uh, not a non-line method for for tracking so did you guys use any tracker to to do the tracking or or you only use the detection and the re-identification Oh, good question. It's a, um, 
actually, I, I read your sample solution a lot and a lot of our ideas comes from your sample solution. Um, but we didn't adopt your tracking idea because here we want, uh, uh, you know, minimum as, as, as small energy cost as possible. But tracking, in order to, if you want to do tracking correctly, it has to run on consecutive frames. Uh, and this is one, one, one reason. The, se the second reason is here, the UAV is flying. So, in, you know, in tracking, there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, pre uh, uh, SLAM, uh, S-L-A-N right. strategies like uh, Carmen filter. Those would no longer work because they, they are the only, they, their assumption is, uh, you know, constant the moving objects or constant moving, constant motion model. Uh, so right. we completely, uh, discard the tracking strategy and we only focus on association. So we don't do any prediction. We, do, we, we, we never try to track every body of person. So, uh, so that's our you know, uh, final adopted uh, pipeline. Well, apparently it worked very well. So still congrats. Yeah, amazing work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I, was, I would owe uh, at least 50% uh, of our work to your sample solution. We inherited a lot of modules and uh, used your, uh, a lot of ideas were inspired from you. Yeah, thanks to the team. All uh, right. It's great to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, then, you want to have a question? Hello. Uh, I have three questions. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, the first one, how much time did you consume at the nine import touch this nine? Uh, in import touch? Yes, in this nine. Baseline? Yes. How much time did you consume at this nine on the Raspberry Pi? Oh, how much time? Uh, I can't I can remember. Uh, I, I don't think we are the most efficient. I think one team, they, they got more efficient energy efficient model than us. Yeah, but I can't remember the exact number. Okay, okay. Uh, and the second question, how many frames did you skip oh. in your solution? Oh yeah, we just use the same as the threshold. If the threshold is 10, then we just skip 10 frames. Uh, 10. Oh, 10, uh, one zero, 10, okay. one zero, yeah. Okay. The threshold uh, in, the, in the judging criterion for, for the correctness. Okay, and uh, how did you skip your frame using OpenCV? Oh, I, I know why you ask this question. Yes, I use OpenCV and I know there are some other tools they can do better, but still at the time we don't know that. We use OpenCV and we found that actually uh, the, uh, the bottleneck will be the video reading. You know, yes. reading those yes. uh, ultra high resolution images is a major bottleneck. Yeah, maybe you, you have the same situation. Yeah, I, but I'm using OpenCV. How okay, about you? Okay. Do you yeah. use OpenCV? Yes, yes. But I, I want to know, uh, uh, I want to know how did you skip your frame? How did you skip oh. your frame? Oh, uh, it's, uh, we, we read the video sequentially. Did you use Grab? CV no, we didn't, grab. we didn't use, we did some experiments. We found that that would be even more uh, time consuming or energy consumption, consumptive. We cannot, uh, uh, we found an article and uh, they did some experiment. We also did some experience offline. We found that uh, reading the video sequentially is even faster than, uh, you know, skipping directly read, you know, set some frame, set some, set some index and then read the video It's even faster than that. Okay. Yeah, okay. sequential reading is the best way. Because okay. I guess it would be the videos, uh, it should be the video encoding part. Uh, the video, like the .avi or .mp4, they are all uh, being compressed. So if you read it uh, like re in random order by skipping a lot of frames, uh, it, it, uh, it had to recompute a lot of things. But if you read it sequentially, because you know, videos they have the they have the property of temporal coherence. So if two that means neighboring frames, they are very close. So the in the, in the video compression part, you utilize such a prior knowledge. Um, and and uh, uh, when we decode it, if we we skip a lot, then uh, the computation pipeline or the decoding pipeline would be rewrong for the OpenCV and it takes a lot of time. Uh, and I want to know, 
cv cv2 point uh, cv2 dot uh, grab this function did you use it grab uh we use the we didn't use this this api uh but okay. i forgot which api api you use there are there are multiple apis in obc they can do and they can uh and they can select one okay. frame from it but we didn't use grab okay thank you yeah okay. thank you thank you any other Wait, yeah, I'm noticing this is the second year in a row that we've heard a lot about adjusting input resolutions and adjusting sampling rates in order to, to reduce energy consumption. And it occurs to me that that's something that you have to do when you're loading from a video. But if you were designing a UAV and designing the software and the hardware for that, that's something that you could just bake into the design. You wouldn't have to like pay extra to, to skip frames you don't want. So uh, I wonder if next year we can do something to allow the maybe some sort of config file that specifies what input resolution and frame rate the solution wants. And then we can sort of do that offline so they don't get charged the energy for that video transformation. And it might be less of a distraction for them. Now we can check the, the video capture configuration and see whether we can do that. Anyone else has any questions? Didn't you have a question earlier or Aiden? I thought you, you were raising your hand. Oh, um, was there um, anything specific about the sample solution that you found to be pretty helpful? And uh, what else you would like to see in the sample solution to help you get a better understanding of what we're looking for? Oh, yeah. Uh, I found that your... Uh, your data data reading part parsing reading parsing, uh, the and the evaluation part they are the most helpful, and also your initial pipeline based on deep sort is very helpful. Uh, we we start from deep sort and uh, we just uh, you know re refine refine our idea on deep sort. Uh, talking about what I expect more. Um, yeah, I would say if you have the sample videos, uh, maybe you can uh, from just annotate one video so that, uh, uh, you, you know, when we debug, when we do the debugging, um, we, we debug on the 7P3B on that video. We manually label it, uh, not, not every frame, but every 20 frame. Um, I believe all the other participant uh, teams, they, they have to do the lab because we at least they need one video to do the validation or debugging. And in order to, to do the debugging, ground truth value is, uh, is, a, is a must. So if you could, um, I mean, uh, provide some ground truth or in person ball labels on just one video and at maybe 50 frames, then be very helpful. That saves us the time. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's a very good point. Yeah. I'll thank you. Notes. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I would like to notice um, there was some data in the data set um, provided. I don't know if you ever um, looked into that, but I oh yeah 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 we, we we know there are some there are some frame like exactly like this scene. Yes. 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 I know in your release the data set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, yeah. We use them. We, we, uh, we did use them. Okay, so you're saying like um, the entire video would, would have been more helpful? Yes, yes. We, uh, let me show you something. Okay, so, so are you able to see my finder? Yeah, yeah yes. we can see it. So outputs, this one. Uh, it's debugging, single debugging. Yeah, this one. So we we make a panel for debugging. So let, let me let me explain what this for. The it is divided into four panels. The upper left one is a predicted uh, tracks, and uh, the the lower left will be the ground truth tracks. And uh, the the right the the upper right would be the read ID error. It 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 displays a read ID error, and the right one would be 
it displays the unmatched error. Just like if you given any um, uh, any tracks, they are unmatched or any detection, they, they are unable to find a track to be matched, we display it. So we, we, we use such a, uh, such a debugging panel and uh, it shows the action detection results. Look at those uh, wide font, wide numbers. It, it shows uh, the action detection results. So we can see that it is able to tell, tell us so at what, what frame, what kind of error happens. For example, like this one. Yeah, like this. We, we, we found that this five, this person number five, track five is completely com completely lost together with the red ball, 13. And we found this because the de detection bounding box is wrong. I, I don't know why, but it detects the, the plain ground. So okay. we are able to, you know, in and uh, we use such a debugging strategy to figure out uh, what module makes the mistake, and uh, we locate the error and uh, you know improve the res responsible modules. See. Okay. Uh, yeah, but to make such a debugging strategy work, we need to have the ground truth tracks. Uh, it's uh, so, so we manually annotate every twenty frames or every fifty frames. I can't remember. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations again. Anyone else has any other questions or suggestions? Well, if not, then again, thank you and congratulations. Um, we hope, Chris, do you want to say anything? Well, I just want to thank uh, again, uh, all the teams that participated. I know we're learning a, a lot here each time from, uh, from all of you. So thank you for the detailed presentation. I think there are some clear learnings for us also to take for next year, as uh, David mentioned uh, earlier. And so we hope to see you there in the next competition. Yeah, great. All right. Then, yeah. uh, uh, so I, sorry I, to I, I just have a last question. Um, so, uh, Christian, do, do you, are you interested in any uh, summer interns? Because we do have some very strong uh, team members there. You know they love Facebook and their dream is to become an intern. You know to work for you in the summer. So do you, do you have any position available? I can uh, I can pass along uh, the the intros to our engineering managers, uh, and I think they'll be best suited there to uh, to to see what's available. Yeah, well, that's great. That's great. Thank you Definitely. very much. Uh, may I contact you offline? Please, please do. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. All right, so I'm looking for uh, possibly a conference or a journal for the team to publish papers. Uh, I'm working on that. And uh, when I have uh, some progress, I will let you know. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I'm very interested. I'm very, I know we, we can do some paper writing. Thank you yeah. and have a good day. Yeah, thank, right. you. thank you. I will share the recording and then uh, with thank you. you. Okay, bye.